good morning from Adelaide this morning on a Monday morning. It's a beautiful day here, nice and sunny, going to be about 19 or 20 degrees I think. We're just getting towards the end of autumn at the moment, so the nights are, are cold and the mornings are cold, but in the middle of the day it's beautiful. Today I want to talk about camcorders, and in particular a particular one that, that I have, and uh, I'll, I'll introduce that in a minute. Starting off years ago, my dad was always my inspiration in both movies and in still photography. And I've on this channel I've showed you um, similar wind-up or old-fashioned wind-up 8mm movie cameras. And uh, my dad progressed from them to, just before he died, he, he bought a, um, a sharp uh, colour viewfinder VHSC camcorder and, and unfortunately he was just starting to really get the idea of video only he died and uh, wasn't able to continue with it but uh, at the same time around about then I was also getting hold of bringing home a video camera a Panasonic video camera I think it might have been called an M1 or something like that from the old days from the place where I worked I was able to bring it home on weekends and I used that to film some of the kids playing lacrosse and my son, my youngest son, was able to use it to make a little film at the time. And uh, I'll come back to him in a minute. So I progressed from there, from having, um, sorry, going back to the early days, I was also using uh, 8mm and Super 8mm movie cameras, shooting film of course, and then graduated when I the first one I bought, I think, was a might have been an M40 Panasonic full-size Super, so not Super VHS tape, and then uh, progressed to about three more cameras in the Super VHS format, all Panasonic. And uh, we first started using them doing a few weddings, my youngest son and I, when I was also doing still wedding photography, and uh, still have uh, one of those cameras. They are terrific cameras, but in the old analog VHS, Super VHS format. So the very next thing that came along, which after going from that area, was when they brought in Mini DV, digital camcorders. And uh, I went to a um, demonstration of one of these in a store that sold them, and I was hooked. I saw the quality, which was way above the VHS quality, and um, I decided to, to buy one. I'll show you the one I bought, which is this little one here which is a, uh, a Canon, that little one there, it's got a flip out um, screen, whoops, if I can get it out, so there's a little flip out screen, lots of controls, and um, a beautiful little camera, but it wasn't, it was a single chip camera, it wasn't a 3CCD camera, which is what I'm about to show you short, shortly, so, so I started doing a lot of uh, mini DV family shots and wildlife and sports and things with that and um, but after a while when um, I was between jobs and had a payout for from some uh, from the job that I was in uh, and it was getting close to the year 2000 and I was getting quite excited about all the technology that was coming out and my son youngest son was too he was into making movies and doing things and and experiments and um, so I decided to lash out and I bought what then was the state-of-the-art mini DV camcorder in my opinion anyway and uh, that was the Canon XL1 which is this beautiful looking beast here and it's an amazing camera and I don't think I don't think they've ever come up with a better design than this um, you, you mounted this you kept this on your shoulder of course but you could lower it down and, and look at it and take it from the lower level um, but uh, beautiful microphone on it which is uh, amazing sound on this camera and um, of course you've got this you sh your shoulder mounted this you put this on this little hook down there you put it on there and that's how you went around taking your video this pulled out a bit and you've got beautiful zoom you've got amazing controls on the side controls everywhere to do things both automatically and manual. It's got an inbuilt image stabilization as well, a beautiful lens, um, a 5.5 to 88 millimeter 16 times zoom lens, and that was adequate for most things, a built-in lens hood, 
and uh, really the one of the greatest cameras in my opinion that, that Canon ever brought out at the time. Now one of the amazing things with this camera is that I've discovered with all these old cameras, just put that down again, <clears throat> with these old cameras people are doing a lot of YouTubing but you can actually use these cameras including the, the Canon XL1 and here's another little uh, a Panasonic one, you can actually use these cameras uh, for vlogging. You can record directly into your laptop using a, a, a cable uh, coming away from both those or all three of those cameras straight into your laptop. I actually just use iMovie on my uh, Apple uh, MacBook Pro and I can record with these three cameras straight into iMovie and create a blog like I'm doing now. In fact, my next movie I'm going to uh, demonstrate doing that. Not today, but I'll be doing that soon. And you can create a vlog straight into iMovie on your laptop and you can edit it and all that sort of stuff. The interesting thing is that two of these cameras here, including the, um, the Canon XL1, uh, it needs some servicing, uh, the Canon XL1, and uh, it plays back the tapes okay, uh, but uh, it doesn't record very well and neither does the first one I bought although the other one I showed you does it works fine but you can actually record straight into your laptop doing a vlog like I'm doing now using my iPhone um, with even without tape in the camera and uh, the good thing of course these cameras were all auto focus auto everything they got good sound on them particularly in a close quarters like this when I demonstrate the uh, Canon XL1 as a vlogging camera later on, it's not as good as quality as you'll get with the modern equipment possibly, but I don't know until I try it. It is a three chip camera, the Canon XL1. So that'll be interesting to see what that looks like when I do it. In case you're wondering what the uh, actual tapes look like, if you've never used these before, we did quite a few weddings with these cameras. These are the, the little tapes. They're very small. This one is, I, for a little while, <laughs> a friend of mine's son was into boxing and he said, no one's doing video of the boxing, the amateur boxing in South Australia, Jeff. Why don't you have a go? So I did. That's a, um, a whole tape of a boxing meeting, amateur boxing meeting I went to and recorded with the Canon XL1. And that was uh, some of the easiest sports video you can do because I, just up, I was up on a raised area looking down on the ring and all you've got to do is just move side to side and just follow the boxes and fill the frame with the boxes and it, and it just worked brilliantly. Maybe I'll put a little bit of that on one of my YouTube channels after I've done this um, uh, vlogging with the XL1. Maybe I'll, I'll demonstrate that by showing you some of the boxing that I did way back. This camera, <coughs> excuse me, we always used to get lots of magazines of course that were especially just for video cameras. I don't know that you get these anymore, <clears throat> but in Australia we had lots of them. And uh, on this particular one, this came out in uh, September 1998, there is a review of that Canon XL1. A pro judges the Canon XL1, and this came out in 1998, which is not long after, I think I bought the camera around about the year 2000. And uh, <clears throat> one of the best things about this camera was not only did I have a lot of fun with it and did all sorts of things, which I've now got all those, I've got about four boxes full of those uh, little mini DV tapes. Some of them are on my YouTube uh, videos. <clears throat> some of the vision from some of those are on there. But um, not only did I have a lot of fun with it, but my youngest son Daniel ended up, um, he started off doing wedding videos while I was doing stills, although we didn't do that too often together. Uh, I assisted him when he was doing the um, the weddings using that camera and I was his assistant and that was a lot of fun but he ended up having a career in the movie industry as a result of getting into that. He uh, ended up doing some work experience in um, an animation studio and he eventually ended up working in the, the film industry and, and still has been until just recently. Um, he's between jobs at the moment because of the, the pandemic crisis and um, but he uh, worked on many of the big budget Hollywood movies from Adelaide. Um, Harry Potter, Superman, 
all sorts of things like that. Um, I think the X Files or something. I'm not sure what he did, but lots of great movies. But so, getting into all this technology way back it was expensive. The Canon XL1 and all the accessories cost me nearly ten thousand dollars. That little one that I showed you before, when I bought that, that was a thousand dollars. I'd be lucky to get fifty dollars if it was working now. Um, and I looked up the Canon XL1 on the uh, internet the other day to see what sort of prices. Some people are selling them around the world anywhere from thirteen hundred dollars to about seventeen hundred dollars. This one needs a little bit of attention, but I can still use it for my vlogging, and it would be and I can play back all the tapes that I've got through that one into and to create new YouTube videos so there you go that's a little bit of a talk about the old mini DV cameras which of course got replaced by all these latest modern cameras and then in turn by the um, by the uh, digital SLRs which both had movies and also uh, stills and a lot of people are using that but I firmly still believe even though I love the uh, digital SLR facts that they can do do video um, I still prefer having a, a purpose-built uh, camcorder whether it's a digital one or a mini DV one or whatever to do my video work so I'm I've got my eyes on a Sony AX53 I think it is or something like that which a friend has and that is a brilliant standalone video camera digital video camera in my opinion so thanks for watching. If you like this, subscribe and look out for when I do my next uh, video, which will be using this as a vlogging camera. I'm going to hook it up and plug it into my laptop. The beauty of it is, of course, that I can control, I have my laptop in front of me and I can actually control this camera from my laptop as I'm, and I can view, because this hasn't got a, a flip screen, I can actually see what I'm recording. I can see now on the iPhone what I'm recording but I'll be able to see on my laptop what I'm actually recording on this. So look out for that one. Let's see what happens. So thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.